So the reason most of our, our beliefs about who we are in the world are formed by the age of six is because from the ages of zero to two, our brains are in um, delta state, which means we're just experiencing. You know, we, most of us don't have memories before the age of two. So we're no. just like little sponges for the world. There's no thinking, there's no analyzing. We're just like soaking it all in, right? And then around the ages uh, between two and six, we move into theta state waves in our brain. Theta waves, and this is one of the reasons hypnosis works for uncovering the unconscious, is that that's the state of our brain when we are under hypnosis. Interesting. We're aware, we're thinking, but we're not really going, well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, that, I don't know about that. Well, have you thought, we aren't analyzing it. We aren't critiquing it. We're just like, just taking it all in. Yes. Hi, I'm Deirdre Breckenridge. I've spent my entire career helping women to get unstuck, to share their stories, nurture relationships, and to grow their brands. But most of all, to find their voices so they can make a difference. Women Worldwide features the stories of passionate women and the ups and downs of their journeys. With deep insight and advice, let Women Worldwide ignite your passion so you can excel in life. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Women Worldwide. Thank you for tuning in, for showing up every single week. You are helping so much to grow our network Every week we have an incredible guest who shares their journey through business and life, the ups, the downs. A lot of these professionals make it look easy, but we know, we know the truth. <laughs> it's never easy and they're willing to share their challenges and their advice with you so that you can fuel your own passion, power up your own voice, and most of all, so that you can excel in your work and your life. Okay, let's get to today's topic and then I'm gonna introduce our special guest. The topic is stress, right? Unnecessary stress. And how do you take this stress and kind of pivot into self-confidence or just having peace of mind? Well, that's where my special guest today has a lot to share on this topic. Joining me on the show is Dr. Jane Tornator. Jane is a therapist, a counselor, a speaker, and she is also the book of Everything is Perfect, Just Not Me. <laughs> and Jane is going to be sharing through her years of experience and professional training how she helps clients to pivot from these unnecessary old patterns of stress to peace of mind. Now, I could share so much about Jane, but I think it's best that she shares her story with you. Jane, it's great to have you on my show. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I am thrilled to be here. Well, it's great because stress is something that I think all of us experience. There's no doubt about it. And it especially gets a little bit more stressful as we move into the holidays. There's so much going on. So it's just perfect timing <laughs> to have you and this show. Um, I always like to kind of kick it off to find out a little bit about why you chose the career path of therapist and counselor. Tell us a little bit about your path to get there. Well, I have my sister um, to thank for being a therapist. Our family was not uh, the healthiest family. <laughs> so after college, I was living in New York City with my sister and we were, I was working in advertising. And my sister decided to drag us all to a family therapist. And the therapist started the session with, I'm here to put myself out of a job. And I'm like, <laughs> what? And she had my attention, right? And she said, well, when I help families, they become healthier. And then if those kids go on to be partnered to have families, they become healthier. And then if those kids go on to be partnered and have families, they become healthier. And she said, pretty soon it spreads around the world and I'm out of a job. And I went, that, I want that. That's what I want. <laughs> awesome. So I went and gave, I gave my resignation and applied to grad schools and here I am. 
here you are today. Well, awesome. I wish I could remember her name so I could thank her, but I don't remember. <laughs> oh well, you can thank your sister for that. That's right. I can thank my sister. And, and what a lesson. I mean, maybe we could all step back and say, if we did our jobs, then we would be out of a job. But it's right. actually a, a good thing. <laughs> I know. Kind it of kind of freaks me out, frankly. But <laughs> Yes, yes. So, Jane, um, you know, I mentioned in the introduction, patterns of stress, mm -hmm. unnecessary stress, and this pivot. So maybe you could just explain what are these, what do these patterns look like? Or, or how can we even identify that there is this stress that we need to address to move forward and, and just to feel better? Right. That's a great question. Um, when I'm working with my clients, the first thing I have them do is get in touch with their body. Because Deirdre, you know, most of us, we stop here, like anything below here, we don't pay attention to. Our body gives us so many signals about what's going on. And so for most people, it's health issues, right? I was going to say you get sick. Exactly. Because our body's talking to us and we're not paying attention. We're just plowing on, being our stressful behavioral selves. And the body's like, stop. Yeah. When I was in grad school, every single break, I would get sick. Like every single break. It would wait till I was done with finals. And then my body's like, we are done. You need to rest. So luckily I've developed habits and tips now that I don't need to get sick every time I need to take a break. No, I mean, it's true. Like I, I even think in the past patterns of, you know, client trainings, traveling for speaking, you, you do all these things. And then the minute, I always blamed it on the airplane, Jane. Right. <laughs> it's got to be the recycled air, you know, on United. But right. no, it, it's because when, is it true when you stop, all of a sudden you start paying attention to what your body says and then you kind of collapse? Um, we, I don't know that we start paying attention. We just aren't given the choice anymore. Got it. Right. <laughs> really interesting. So then why, um, why wouldn't somebody want to do this? Are there reasons why people would say, no, 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 I, I don't want to address this, or um, I see these patterns, but I kind of have to stick on this path. Like, do you ever get pushback from yes. people? Yes, yes. And when people, you know, we all have things we want to change. We want to, oh, I want to exercise every day, or I want to eat only super healthy food every day. And we have these ideas that are super great, right? I mean, to be healthy and to be calm and less stressed. And then we continually don't take actions to make those desires come true. Right. Always there's some unconscious belief, mostly that we've learned before the age of six oh about my how we should be in the world, right? Wow. It's that goes our way brain back. is amazing. Yes. Most of what we learn of who we are in the world and how safe the world is by the time we're six, that is formed. Now, luckily, we can retrain ourselves, but it takes it takes um, in some form or another uncovering the unconscious beliefs about how we should be in order to make those changes about who we really are or right. who we really want to be. So how do you, if you have this unconscious belief that goes back to before you turn six years old, yeah, it, it, what kind of mind work is necessary? I mean, is that hypnoti hypnotism? Or is that just literally feeling in a safe place and being able to talk to somebody to get those feelings or, or thoughts out? That's a great question. Um, there are many different methodologies to use. Some people use meditation. Some people use hypnosis because the hypnosis gets to the unconscious mind. Can right. I go, go a little brain geek on you here? Sure, yeah, please do. So the reason most of our, our beliefs about who we are in the world are formed by the age of six is because from the ages of zero to two, our brains are in um, delta state, which means we're just experiencing. You know, we, most of us don't have memories before the age of two. So we're no. just like little sponges for the world. There's no thinking, there's no analyzing. We're just like soaking it all in, right? And then around the ages uh, between two and six, we move into theta state waves in our brain. Theta waves, and this is one of the reasons hypnosis works for uncovering the unconscious, is 
that that's the state of our brain when we are under hypnosis interesting we're aware we're thinking but we're not really going well that doesn't make any sense well that i don't know about that well have you thought we aren't analyzing it we aren't critiquing it we're just like just taking it all in yes almost like the young brain who wouldn't know to push back exactly the creative the brain. Young, right the young brain is not programmed to do that right so we're just taking in information and going okay except now we're aware of it right right so it just our little brain just takes it in and goes this is truth and it's almost like a little you know deer in the head like, this is truth and so it, hypnosis does help and get us to that state where we can go oh this is what i learned i do other methodologies um like one of the things i use is called sims complex integration of multiple brain systems and it is a way that uses both um, neural pathway change and intense connection to help people uncover what's going on to help bring their unconscious to the consciousness and the third thing is our body when we pay attention to our body our body will um, when we have something going on in our life that's that's triggering something with the past our body will respond so if we just get quiet and pay attention to the physical sensations often a belief will come up and we'll go wow i didn't know that so there are many different ways to uncover it so when the belief comes up and you start to understand well if i had this belief that's probably where the pattern formed mm -hmm. how do you just make sure that you don't fall back so you've done all this work your, your clients do hard work with you yes. how do you make sure that you don't fall back into oh. that pattern or once it's out it's out it's done no uh, a teacher i work with says habits are forever and when i right. first heard that i went oh no, oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to annoy what, my kids forever. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, what happens is our habits are forever. They're, you know, our memories, our actions, our thoughts are all literally neural pathways in our brain. So to create change, what we do is stop the old neural pathway by paying attention, by being aware, and then making another choice, the choice that we want. So the old neural pathways are super highways. They are, they're the like Audubon. Right. You start to have any thought and it's gone. And you know, that's when our mind goes to the hamster wheel and we can't stop thinking and right. we can't stop ourselves from taking that donut or whatever it is, or yep. just staying up one more hour to do more work. Mm -hmm. um, but when we're conscious in the moment, we can go, well, what's my choice now? And in the beginning, people, it takes, takes extra support and help to shift from the I-5, that's our freeway here in Seattle, to the <laughs> little cow path that we're just building, you know, like one step at a time. But once we do it enough, we've built enough neural pathways, the choice is easier. It's like, oh, here's the habit. No, I'm gonna do this one because this one actually reflects my values more. So you're so just gonna carve a, a, new, a new super highway. Literally. Yeah, that's why change is simpler than we think. It's literally practicing, 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 practicing for the rest of our lives. <laughs> so it's interesting. So that, that's the lesson that you have to keep practicing. Yes, I was talking to a friend and she said something brilliant. She said, well, you know, when we exercise and we get in shape, we don't go, okay, now I've got the appropriate muscle mass. I'm done for the rest of my life. Right. No, we, yeah, no, we, we have keep, to keep exercising. We keep going. Exactly. And our brain is wired to search for the negative. The neocortex, the newest part of our brain, mm. is when we're not actively engaged, you know, like in the flow state that people talk about, it is literally always searching for what needs to be fixed. Where is a potential problem? Where is something I need to worry about so I can be careful of? That's our natural state. Yeah, and if so, you're doing that, you, how, how can you possibly be happy and have peace of mind? Right, through awareness and practice. Right. Because it totally is possible. It's awareness and practice and choice. Choice. Yeah. Yes. I think that's what it comes down to because you're either going to, I mean, we choose. 
everything that we do. Yes. And it's a Unless we're unconscious. Choice. Yes, exactly. And it's a, it's a compound choice. So if you want to carve the new super highway, you can, and that's a choice. And every new choice that you make towards that just compounds it and makes it better. Or yes. you can choose to let your neocortex kind of take over. <laughs> right. And that's the old pattern. And then you start talking about the reptilian brain and you're in survival mode. And yep. that's just more of the same. So, yes, it is. Yeah. So, you know, we, we talked a little bit about, you know, the work that you're doing. You just wrote a book, mm -hmm. right? So everything is perfect, just not me. I love yes. that. I have the visual. <laughs> I'm so glad that you, you showed the book. And, you know, I mean, writing a book in and of itself is, is quite a journey and maybe even stressful. <laughs> I don't know. It was for me. Was it for you? Uh, my first book, yeah. Uh, actually, Cyber Branding was the first book that I wrote. And I can say now, I did not enjoy the writing process at all because my publishers had me on such strict deadlines. It took over a year to write the book. And then it took like almost another year to publish it. And with a name like Cyber Branding, it's obsolete. By the oh, time no. it goes to market, all the case studies that I had put in there that all those um internet <laughs> kind of brands went went away oh but no <laughs> i know i know so you know what jane i'm actually we're, we're gonna pick up on your book in a moment i'm just gonna ask you to hold your thoughts just for a second because we're gonna shift our focus right now to to um take a look at the sponsor of today's women worldwide exercise um episode which is Routledge Publishing. And I don't know if you know Routledge, but they are one of the world's largest publishers of academic textbooks and business journals. And they also happen to be the publisher of my book. Now this book was a happy writing process. <laughs> I, I will tell you that. Um, so not a lot of stress here, but um, my book answers over 150 questions all around uh, reputation, um, media, relationship building, social media, measurement. And Jane, I thought it'd be really fun if I asked you a question and okay. you answer one from the book. So are you game? I'm game. Awesome. Okay, so your question being that you are a therapist and a counselor, <laughs> um, it's question number 34. What do you do when a situation looks grim so talk about uh, stress <laughs> right yeah that's a perfect um scenario for our brain shutting down and going to reptilian brain so the first thing i do i got from a woman named tara brock is i put my hand on my heart and just center myself and that helps my brain get back on board and then grim evokes oh my god it's out of control and i don't know what to do and uh so what always helps me settle is, okay, so we go back to choice. What's one thing I can do about this situation? I may not be able to fix the whole thing, but is there one thing I can address? And if it's totally out of my control, then I say, all right, how, do, how am I going to be with this? How am I going to be with it versus, you know, just um, feeling totally out of control? So it's, it's what can I do? Or how am I going to be present with this? Do I want to be stressed or do I want to have my brain on board going, okay, now what? You know what? That's really, really good. And, and either way, you have to be centered. Yes. Thank you so much for answering that question. That's really helpful advice to all the Women Worldwide listeners. And I also want to thank Routledge for sponsoring this episode of women worldwide okay jane let's jump back into the discussion because okay you know before we segued into the mid roll and talking about rutledge we were saying that you published a book yes. and maybe you could just <clears throat> share um what did you want people to walk away with it's a great question actually nobody's ever asked me that before <laughs> I'm glad I could be the one. <laughs> Yay! Um, whether in my uh, therapy work or with my book, 
I want people to walk away with more kindness for themselves because they're imperfect humans. We have this, and I learned before the age of six that my job was to be perfect because that would keep everybody happy and healthy and safe. And I was the smallest one in the family, so you know how well that worked. But still, I had this belief, right? I know. (laughs) Come on, family, I'm going to corral you, right? But um, what I learned instead is that I'm much happier and more at peace when I see my flaws and I forgive myself. It doesn't mean I don't try to make changes still. People come in to work with me because they wanna make changes. But what I've found is that when we can love and accept ourselves as we are, we actually get to where we wanna be faster. Right. It's totally opposite of what I learned. You have to work very hard and you have to do it right the first time, every time. When we can bumble around and go, oops, made mistakes, sorry, make our amends, and then try again, we actually become much more successful, much less stressed human beings. So I want people to know that you're human and it's okay because everybody else is too. You don't have to be better than everybody else. That's right. And and just be happy with yourself and even all the mistakes that you make. I just don't understand where this notion of perfect comes from because I'm hearing it far too often, especially with younger generations, uh, millennials, and even Gen Z. So, I mean, it's really easy, Jane, to just blame everything around you, but is it, is it really like what we're hearing from parents or um, the the culture where we grow up or the school system? This is a really hard question, but where does perfect come from? Um, I would say before the age of six. I have an analogy I use, which is we're a bowl of oranges. We as human beings, we're all in a bowl of oranges. And we're looking around and we see these perfect round spheres, with cute little dimples, and they're just great. You look at them and go, oh my God, they've got it all together. They're perfectly round. Wow. We see our insides. We see the messy, sticky, pulpy stuff. But if you cut it and it gets the squirts everywhere and it gets sticky and you know, kind of, ugh. so we see that in ourselves, right? But nobody else does. We don't go around with, you know, cutting our orange open going, hi, here are all the ways I screw up constantly. <laughs> right. But we see the outside of everybody else. So we're comparing our insides with people's outsides. Always. Unless yeah. people like Brene Brown, who is my personal hero. Oh, she's awesome. Shares, right? Right. Be I vulnerable. Think, yes. Yeah. Exactly. And, um, when we allow ourselves to share our vulnerability appropriately, right? right? We don't share it to people who we don't trust and who haven't earned our trust or that we can't share and go, I'm okay. No matter how you respond, I'm good because I'm sharing what I'm good with. Right. Right. But when we share appropriately in a way in, that is an in integrity with who we are, we actually give permission to people around us to also be fallible. And we're humans, like it's literally impossible to be perfect, but we've got this idea, like I'm speaking for myself, that it's totally possible and we should, actually what we learn is that you can be flawed, I can't. Hmm. I hear that so many, well, it's okay for other people to make mistakes, I I can't. Yeah, I hear that, I hear that too. And Mm -hmm. if you tell, um, so going back to millennials, if you tell a millennial, it's okay. You don't, you don't have to be perfect. There is no such thing as perfect. That doesn't exactly sink in. Right. So what happens and a lot of the work I do is we learn through experience, right? Always. You know, when you're talking to someone and they go, oh yeah, I know. And you're like, no, you don't. Mm-hmm. You know up here, right. but you don't know it in your body, in your heart. You don't know it. Right. We know things only when we experience it. And we learn to be perfect. Like every habit that is our problem for us eventually, yeah. we learn to keep ourselves safe. There was a, a great child psychologist called Jean Piaget. And he said, every problem behavior was once a solution. Literally. Hmm. 
Every problem behavior was once a solution to a problem. And before the age of six, we don't have our full brain, right? We're just no. like, we, we are not able to critically think. So we come up with solutions like mine was being perfect, <laughs> very, very good. And that's what I was capable of that time. So it's having them experience being flawed and being okay. Being okay. Yeah. And having people not go, no, you can't do that. Stop it. You can't be angry right now. What you're embarrassing me. Stop it. Why, why did you not get an A? And we're like, uh, I don't know. Right? right. So you have the relived re neural pathway experience of, wow, I really screwed up. I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. It's the lived experience, which creates the neural pathways, which eventually changes that belief of, I have to be perfect. I mean, it's just such a great feeling to be like, I screwed up and I'm okay. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, know. I, it's so funny because it took a really long time to not take things so seriously. Like, I think I was on a podcast the, the other day and I shared a wrong date of when something happened, but I didn't beat myself up. I'm like, oh, got the date wrong. Like, no, no big deal. It, it's okay. So we're, Awesome. How do you think you got to that point? Oh my goodness. I really think it, it took meditation. <laughs> Definitely meditation has helped me uh, because that, and, and yoga. So those mm -hmm. two things in combination just make me more aware and in tune of what makes me feel good. And it is now a choice to feel good. And yes. sometimes when you get that angsty moment of, oh, I said this, or, oh, I, I, you know, I should have said that. I'm like, this doesn't feel good. But what does make me feel good is just knowing that uh, it's okay. <laughs> and I right, mean, right. So I think there's a little self-talk involved. There's a lot of self-talk. Yes. Yes. There's definitely, it's what, I also notice it's what you tell yourself. Yes. So, you know. That has um, been years in the making. Me too. Right? Like through, I don't know how many lives you've had in terms of reinventing yourself or growing in your career, but I do find out that each phase of my reinvention <laughs> is a new phase of self-talk. And yes. that self-talk is what keeps me going on a, a good <laughs> and, and happier path. Yeah. And you still face massive challenges. Yes, always. Yep. If we're growing, we are we are facing challenges. Exactly. And and there's things that are going to happen around you. It could be, you know, family things or work things, but as long as I love that this what you said, as long as you stay centered and know who you are and you're good to yourself, it's going to be you can you can handle anything. Yes, absolutely. One of my favorite phrases is, I don't know, and I'm okay. Oh, I love that. I don't Isn't that know. Awesome? And I'm okay. <laughs> I think yeah. I'm going to be doing some self-talk. I don't know. And I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. So Jane, you know, we're just mentioning <clears throat> challenges and, and how even if you're super, super centered and you're present and you're aware, there's still going to be challenges. So do you ever like, step back and feel like no matter how far you've come that you have challenges and, and maybe you could just share with, with <laughs> no I have no challenges <laughs> like what when when you're faced with a, a challenge with maybe your business or mm -hmm. how are you solving it or how are you approaching it right oh that's a great question as you said it's a lot of self-talk because habits are forever. I've got a very negative um, habit of, of judging myself. Like I'm constantly, a friend of mine calls it the committee. Like we don't have just one word. We've got lots of voice going, you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. Well, of course you should do it, but you should do it better. Well, no, you should have done it a while ago. So you didn't do it. So stop. And you know, it's like, and it's just hammering at us. And no matter what we're doing, our ego can make it wrong like no matter what so i like you stop and become aware of my thoughts and then remember honestly if i'm in my business i'm now going online 
which is a big challenge for me. It's, it's some, not something I've done before. It's a stretch sure. and I'm going to be reaching people like writing the book was a stretch because people have this that I don't even know. Right. And they could totally judge it and go, Oh, that's stupid. Oh no, it's know. good. <laughs> it's <laughs> good book. <laughs> it's oh, thank you. Um, but I, I literally, when our sphere gets wider, we have less control over what people think of us, right? Yeah. Oh, that's true. Like, right? And yeah. it's terrifying because we want every, well, let me speak for myself. I want everybody to like me a lot, right? That's how I grew up and that's how I learned to be safe. So I keep coming back to my message of, for me personally, I want to spread this way to be these ways to be more compassionate and more loving to ourselves because I know and I've seen when we do that we are more loving and compassionate to other people so I keep coming back to and I've got people who remind me when I'm wigging out they're like Jane remember this message works this helps you are here to help more people I'm like that's right okay right so it's 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 reframing the who do you think you are people are gonna hate it it's not gonna help to right this does work and I'm making this effort to spread it because I know it works. So it's totally reframing that self-talk. And I also, one of my favorite practices that I do a lot, but every morning and every night I have a gratitude practice. You were interviewing, um, you know, Stephanie D'Alfonso mm -hmm. and she talked about, I think she talked about appreciation. Yes. Yeah. I, I see them as very similar. And when we we're literally forming neural pathways of, there are good things in my life, no matter what no matter is going what. on. And I knew somebody who once said, I, I am so stressed out. Really, all I can be grateful for is this next breath. And I went, we can always be grateful for our next breath. We can always find, dial right. it down small enough. I'm grateful that my cats, I'm grateful for my cats a lot, right? They're my go-to. I, I think I'm of my cats. for and my just, dogs. <laughs> right? Right? So yep. we can always find something. And so I always. keep going back to appreciation and gratitude and then self-talk. That's awesome. You know, Jane, I can't even believe that we're like at the last, almost, almost the last question. Of wow. The show. Okay. <clears throat> when it's an advice question. You've already given so much advice, but is there any other piece of advice that you would like to offer all of the women worldwide network on how they can move into the holidays and to be able to just release a little bit of the stress in their lives. Yes. <clears throat> if I were queen of the world, I would ban the word should, must, have to, and need. They create stress. And around the holidays, there are many ways things should be. We have to do this. We have to get all these gifts. We have to make sure this is food is here. We have to invite everybody. We have to make look good. We have to... Blah, 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 blah. We have I just wrote those down, by the right? way. That's awesome. really, really good. So what those words alone create a sense of failure and stress. Like, so what I do when I work with people, and let's do this. Do we have time to do a little exercise now? Oh, sure, of course. Awesome. <laughs> let's do it. So what's something you, quote, should do or you have to do? Oh, so, I mean, we, we have to prepare for Thanksgiving. Great. Okay. So say, I have to prepare for Thanksgiving. I have to prepare for Thanksgiving. And close your eyes. And what do you feel in your body? Oh, I just feel a lot of energy kind of moving through, but not sure if it's positive. <laughs> oh, okay. So that energy. And where do you feel the energy? Um, in my stomach. In your stomach. Okay, great. So a lot of people feel uh, their stomach. A lot of people feel their shoulders tense up or... Mm -hmm like forward or up and some people for their brow, they feel more tension. Yeah. Now say, it's a good idea to prepare for Thanksgiving. It's a good idea to prepare for Thanksgiving. And what do you feel? Lighter. Right? Lighter. You said the same thing, Deirdre, right? Mm -hmm. you, want, you want to prepare for Thanksgiving. This is something that it's important to you, so you're going to do it. We can either do things with more stress or we can do things with more ease. And the word should, must, have to, need, and for Midwesterners, gotta. Mm. And I've been hearing supposed to a lot lately. <laughs> supposed to do that. We actually create more stress with something 
we think is important to do. So I would just by the way we say it, just how we say it. So I say it's a good idea or it'd be helpful if, and Hmm. it literally becomes, there's less resistance to doing that thing we're going to do anyway. We just do it with more ease. So that's my tip that I will give anyone I can get to listen to me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, you have lots of people listening to you, Jane. So thank you. That's really good advice. I, I took down no more should, must, have to, and need. Right. And rephrase. That's excellent. Yay. Okay. Last question. Super easy. Where can people find out more about you, your work, and your book? Oh, awesome. Um, they can go to my website, everydaylove.me. Um, I'm on Facebook, Everyday Love. And I'm on LinkedIn, Jane Tornator. And my book is on Amazon, or you can go to my everydaylove.me. And if you want a free copy of the book, you can put in your email and I'll send you a PDF of it. That's fantastic. Jane, yeah. thank you so much for coming oh. on the show and for sharing all of your advice about these old patterns and stress and how you can find peace of mind. And I hope everybody who's listening can be centered, put their hands on their heart, say the right words and just feel a little bit lighter. Yeah. So thank you so much. Awesome. I had a delightful time, Deirdre. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my pleasure. And I want to thank all of you for tuning into Women Worldwide. Now you know how much we appreciate your feedback. So please, you can tweet me. I'm, I'm on Twitter at Dee Breckenridge. If you want to sign up for the YouTube channel, you can leave a comment there. The channel is Deirdre Breckenridge. Go to our website, womenworldwideshow.com and sign up for the updates. And no matter where you are, um, always know that we love hearing your feedback and please keep it coming. Okay, friends. Until our next episode, stay focused, energized, and feeling empowered. Thank you.